Welcome back to the Hybrid Network, everybody, and another discussion on Stephen King's larger universe of books, today focusing again on it. We've gone over a lot from the initial book, going over character arcs, explaining the deeper backstory of Pennywise, and just discussing the new film set to come at us fairly soon. Odds are that at this point you know a good bit about the book or the original miniseries that came out, and so you've seen firsthand how it fell twice to the Losers Club and their combined power once when they were children, and once when they were adults, 30 years later. The entity just couldn't withstand their combined might, and it ended up passing away, never to terrorize Derry, Maine ever again. Or is that really the case? The first time Pennywise faced the losers was in 1958. The creature ended up mortally wounded, but not dead. It had survived the onset of the Ritual of Chud and had retreated, with the children concluding that it had sulked off to find a place to die. However, fearing the worst, the kids made a pact with each other through blood, that no matter where they were or what happened, if it should ever return to Derry, they would as well, banding together to kill the entity once and for all. Eventually, this winds up happening. In 1985, the murders that plagued their childhood start to happen once again, the first being the death of a young man named Adrian Mellon. Tossed from a bridge by three homophobic individuals, attacking Adrian and his boyfriend for provoking them with their actions. While Adrian was battered and bloodied on the ground, it attacked him, dragging it into its lair as the sight of a horrific clown scarred both his lover and one of the bullying youths. After this and several more incidents, Mike Hanlon finally called up the other losers, telling them that it had finally returned, making sure that they would honor their blood pact as children and return to finish what they started so many years ago. Of course, you all know the story, that they were successful in finally defeating it and freeing the town from its clutches. Or did they? As I'm sure you're all aware by now, Stephen King's work is pretty special in that a lot of the stories that he writes takes place within the same universe, some even taking place within the same town, and Derry, Maine happens to be one of those popular towns that he's utilized several times. In fact, the town makes an appearance in the novel Dreamcatcher a story that follows four friends that come into contact with an extraterrestrial infection, one that seeks to use humanity as host bodies to spread themselves across the globe. One of the characters in the book, Jonesy, becomes infected with his mind taken over by one of these aliens, calling itself Mr. Grey. Mr. Grey seeks to infect all of Derry by polluting the water supply with its spores, meaning it has to find access to the standpipe. Unfortunately though, the standpipe has been destroyed since 1985, after a storm toward asunder once the Losers Club engaged it for the final time. After finding the wreckage of where it once was, Mr. Grey comes across a shrine devoted to those that lost their lives in the storm, but more importantly, it found a shrine to all the children that became food for Pennywise, built by the remaining Losers Club members that survived the final encounter. It's a touching scene until the novel describes another message scrawled over the top of that one. Bright red letters gleaming like blood against the devoted message, reading the following. Pennywise lives. Within the pages of another book by King, the Tommyknockers, we're introduced to another reference that has, quite frankly, chilling implications. I'm not a big fan of this book, so I try to talk about it as little as I can, but essentially, a town is brought under the influence of some object within the woods that grants alien genius and telepathy to the townsfolk. But of course, this knowledge comes with a terrible price as the town drifts further and further away from their own humanity. It's an interesting premise, sure, but again, trust me, it's not very good. Despite all of this, there's a reference in the book that's pretty disturbing. One of the characters in the novel begins to have hallucinations and a sort of mental breakdown. Driving along the streets of Haven, he sees an image that seems to indicate that Pennywise is indeed alive. Tommy had begun to hallucinate. As he drove up Wentworth Street, he thought he saw a clown grinning up at him from an open sewer manhole. A clown with shiny silver dollars for eyes and a clenched white glove filled with balloons. Now, at the time, Tommy was dealing with a great amount of stress, and perhaps his mind and experiences aren't fully reliable, but the appearance seems a little too familiar to just be a hallucination, doesn't it? 
probably one of King's most important novels. Insomnia acts sort of like a branch off from the Dark Tower series, introducing the Crimson King for the first time, and tying into some of the concepts and themes that that saga presents, such as the Wheel of Ka, Order versus Chaos, etc, etc. The novel, however, plays a part in this mystery surrounding its survival, because the book itself takes place in Derry, Maine as well, with small references to it occurring throughout to create a seamless connection. However, one of the greatest references, and perhaps the most damning, occurs near the book's climax. When main character Ralph Roberts pays witness to a swirling mass of colors and lights within Derry's sky. Something Ralph knows as deadlights, and knows that looking into them will drive him to a place far worse than death. After this, the Crimson King disappears, sucked up to another level by these deadlights, but their mere presence is alarming. The deadlights were utilized significantly within it, as they were known as the entity's true form. A form that defied human conceptions and thought, and any who were to stare at these lights would be driven to madness and death. Their presence is alarming, because if these deadlights still remain over Derry, blanketing the town, then this could mean that Pennywise and It go far deeper into the town than the losers could ever comprehend. They may have killed an extension of the creature, sure, but perhaps there is no way to ever truly free Derry from its stranglehold. Perhaps, due to its widespread influence after so many years, Derry wasn't just where It inhabited, but perhaps Derry was It all along. And as such, its existence lives on as long as Derry remains. In this way, perhaps It can never truly be killed, just that its influence can be lessened significantly, but no matter what, It will always hold a place over the small town. It can blossom, but there would always be a slightly malevolent force pulling strings just outside of its perception. Derry would always be within its dead lights. Do you believe that Pennywise is still in fact alive? Let us know in the comments down below, and be sure you stay subscribed to the Hybrid Network for all of our news updates, discussions, and more on Stephen King and his larger universe. This is Luke, signing out.